frame in mind next week, like you're going to keep at it for three days, five days to see this good faith? How Are, long is it going to take you to see this good, a I'll, couple of minutes? Well, uh, one of the complications, uh, unfortunately, is that these are indirect yes. uh, discussions with the Iranians. Uh, so this is a process that uh, in some ways has to be iterative. Uh, it's a process that uh, will require uh, deep consultations uh, with our P5 plus one uh, partners uh, in Vienna. Um, they will, in the first instance, have a sense of uh, what the new government, the approach the new government is taking, uh, and we will uh, continue to engage uh, closely with them. Uh, and this, of course, is something that we've done uh, since the sixth round concluded months and months ago. Uh, as you know, uh, President Biden uh, convened, or President Biden, I should say, took part uh, in a meeting of uh, the uh, E3 plus one uh, when we were in Europe uh, the other week to discuss uh, the status of uh, nuclear talks uh, and Iran's nuclear program. Uh, Secretary Blinken uh, has had an opportunity to uh, discuss Iran's uh, concerning nuclear activity uh, with our uh, European allies, with other members of the P5 plus one, including uh, the PRC, uh, not all that long ago uh, during our last trip uh, to Europe as well. And of course, Rob Malley uh, was uh, recently in uh, the Middle East. He was recently uh, meeting with uh, the E3 political directors as well, along with our Israeli partners in the GCC. Uh, so even while we've been on this unfortunate pause, uh, we have had an opportunity to continue to compare notes to continue to uh, share uh, our concerns, and these are shared concerns, uh, with our allies uh, and partners who are in the P5 plus one and who are not. On Afghanistan, mm -hmm. um, just last week, UN Envoy said ISIS-K is basically now present in nearly all 34 provinces. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that's the US assessment also. And can you talk a little bit about if there is any progress with the neighboring countries for over the horizon CT operations? Thomas was. Um, you know, he had talks last week with in Pakistan. Well, I would refer. I would need to refer to uh, my intelligence community or my uh, DoD colleagues to offer an assessment as to ISIS's presence uh, throughout uh, the country. But what I can say, uh, and you saw another concrete demonstration of this with the designations we announced a couple days ago, uh, that we are committed to countering ISIS K and ensuring that Afghanistan never again uh, becomes a safe haven for uh, terrorism. Uh, we're working with uh, our international partners, including under the auspices of the Global Coalition to Defeat ISIS, uh, to deny the group, uh, as you saw the other day, access to financing, uh, to disrupt, to deter foreign terrorist fighters uh, from reaching Afghanistan and the region, uh, as just as we are continuing uh, using multiple tools to counter ISIS-K's uh, pernicious ideology. Uh, we are committed to disrupting uh, illicit financing, limiting their abilities to conduct further attacks against civilians, uh, and supporting our partners in counterterrorism and disrupting terrorism uh, finance. It is absolutely a priority of ours uh, to see to it uh, that Afghanistan can uh, never again emerge as a launching pad uh, for these operations that may pose a threat to the United States, that could pose a threat uh, to um, our allies and partners around the world. Uh, just as we have uh, discussed uh, this counterterrorism agenda, this counter ISIS uh, agenda uh, with our allies and partners under the auspices of the, of the global coalition uh, and through other means, we've also uh, discussed this directly uh, with the Taliban. We've consistently said uh, we are prepared to engage the Taliban on a practical, pragmatic basis uh, on areas uh, of core national interest uh, to us. And of course, counterterrorism and seeing to it that Afghanistan can never again be used as a, as a launch pad for international attacks uh, is a core national interest. And so we have remained uh, in contact with the Taliban uh, on these issues. I can confirm that next week, uh, Special Representative for Afghanistan, Tom West, uh, he'll return to Doha for two weeks of meetings with Taliban leaders there. Uh, they'll discuss, uh, as I said before, our vital national interests when it comes to Afghanistan. Uh, that includes counterterrorism. Uh, that includes safe passage for U.S. citizens and for Afghans uh, to whom we have uh, a special commitment. Uh, and that includes humanitarian assistance uh, and the economic uh, situation uh, of the country. That, too, uh, will be a priority uh, area of conversation with them. Uh, Tom West has been on the job now for, I think, some six weeks. Uh, and in that time, he's already 
uh, been um, uh, busy just before he was named to this role. As you recall, he traveled uh, to Doha uh, to meet uh, directly with uh, the Taliban as part of an interagency delegation. Uh, he, not all that long ago, traveled to uh, Europe and Russia and India um, to discuss the way forward on Afghanistan with uh, our allies uh, and partners. Uh, in many of those conversations, uh, we discussed those, those issues that are of core national interest to us, counterterrorism, uh, safe passage. Uh, but again, a key theme was uh, humanitarian assistance and what the United States, together with the international community, uh, might do to alleviate the humanitarian uh, plight that, um, uh, that now confronts uh, the people of Afghanistan. Uh, for our part, we've spoken of the humanitarian assistance that the United States has pledged to Afghanistan, $474 million uh, in this year alone. What we are doing to facilitate uh, the provision of humanitarian aid and assistance uh, to the people uh, of uh, Afghanistan, uh, not only through our direct provision of assistance to our uh, um, third partners on the ground, uh, but also the steps uh, that we are taking, including the issu issuance of specific and general licenses uh, to make clear that uh, humanitarian assistance to the people of Afghanistan is something uh, that uh, we strongly support. Final question in the back. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have two questions on Indo-Pacific. Um, one is for on Quad. Next meeting with a Quad in Tokyo. Um, do you have any update on uh, when in, in next year will be held uh, in on what level um, uh, in what form, virtual or in person, uh, such uh, such details. And one on the trilateral meeting uh, held last week uh, between U.S., Japan, and R.K. and the bilateral meeting uh, between Japan and U.S. In the readout <coughs> of those meetings, uh, you have men mentioned about the discussion on Indo-Pacific, but didn't use uh, adjectives of free and open. Why was that? I'm just curious why um, the readout refrained from using those terms. Uh, there, there's been no uh, policy shift. Certainly, uh, a, a, a primary goal, um, not only of the United States, um, but of our allies and partners, and that includes uh, the three uh, uh, allies and partners we have in the Quad context, uh, is the preservation, is the promotion of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Uh, a free and open Indo-Pacific uh, rules-based international order, uh, as I was uh, mentioned to Michael, mentioning to Michael before, uh, is something that uh, we seek to promote and to protect, protect uh, the world over. So every time we meet with our treaty allies in the Indo-Pacific, every time we meet uh, in a multilateral setting, whether it's uh, with the Quad, whether it's with our ASEAN partners, uh, whether it is uh, in any other context, uh, the free and open uh, Indo-Pacific is really at the heart uh, of everything uh, that we are seeking to do uh, when it comes to uh, that region. I can assure you uh, that it was really the core context uh, of our meetings, uh, of our meeting and Secretary Sherman, Deputy Secretary Sherman's meeting uh, the other day with her uh, Japanese counterpart, but also with her uh, Korean counterpart as well, uh, including in the trilateral meeting. And on Quad? Uh, we don't have uh, the next iteration of that to announce, but as you know, uh, the Quad is indispensable uh, to our efforts to uphold uh, that very concept of free and open Indo-Pacific. Uh, Secretary Blinken has had an opportunity to hold a uh, ministerial uh, Quad meeting. President Biden uh, has now had an opportunity both on a virtual basis and in person uh, to meet with his Quad counterparts. So uh, I can assure you uh, that we'll find additional opportunities to meet uh, as a Quad, uh, but we will also find additional opportunities uh, to meet on a bilateral basis with our uh, treaty allies, uh, with our partners in the Indo-Pacific, uh, and, and in other multilateral fora, uh, just knowing how pivotal and important uh, this region is uh, to our interests, uh, to our values, and to the interests and values uh, that we share uh, with our allies and partners in the region. Thank you all very much.